In today's tutorial, let's work on a bold angles pillow, and this is by Yarnspirations.com. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today we're going to work on the bold angles pillow that you see on this side here of the screen. And this is one that we did last year with the bold angles pillow, but you can see that the angles are going in a different direction. So here is this year's kind of style that we're going to be working with today. Let me tell you a little bit about the differences between the two, and then we're going to dive into this pattern. So last year I made this one here and there's a full tutorial available on how to do this as far as reading the graph in order to do it. The only difference between the really the two is that the graph is different. Obviously the shapes are different therefore the graph would be different. So if you'd like to follow this one we here we have it here on YouTube to be able to follow that. But the instructions on changing the yarn colors and the bobbins and all of that wonderful jazz with this particular pattern is the same on both. The only difference is, is that the graph is different so you just have to be able to be conscientious of doing that. So to play today you'll need a 5 millimeter size H crochet hook today and we're going to be using Karen 1 pound yarn to make this particular example. Now let's go through the pattern in more detail. Before we get into the written instructions you have a front side and a back side to this particular pillow. We have the front side here that you see here. These are not sewn together. This is a one piece unit that we're changing the yarn colors as we crochet in the rows going all the way up and therefore it's one face. The back here is a consistent of two panels and so if you really look carefully about right about this mark right here you'll notice that it looks a little bit different because this panel is folding up into here. So this pillow can be removed for washing. So it's just a matter of just reaching into this particular slot pulling out the pillow form and uh, you'll be able to wash your pillow if you need to or even wash the form itself. So this is on the back made up of two panels that overlap each other and they're overlapping maybe each other about two inches right here and it's a really good kind of a cool thing. So when you go to sew the back here to the front what happens is that you come along and you're just going to attach it I believe with the single crochet we'll get to that in a bit and then when they start becoming overlapping you just have to put that piece and this bottom piece together as you're attaching it to create this pocket that you see here. You go all the way around and etc. So it's a really kind of a cool idea so you don't have to do this uh, particular work on the back side if you don't want to and if you prefer the back side just being one unit then just keep on crocheting until it matches the shape of this and then just uh, being able to uh, single crochet it all together if you don't need to remove your pillow form. That's completely up to you. So in the instructions today there's only two pages because we're going to be following a graph today. It's like a graph GAN. If you ever wanted to learn graph GANs this is the one to do it. It's considered intermediate because you have to play with different yarns at the same time in order to get the look that you see. So there's a, a difference of four different colors that you see here. It's all care one pound yarn but the reality is is that there's not a lot of written instruction because we have to follow the graph that is on page number two. So let me just flip that over and so it shows you what the back panel looks like right there. It shows you that you're going to be doing some reverse single crochet right in the very end. We have videos on that as well. But here is the graph in order for us to follow in each one of the box, uh, boxes that you see across represents a stitch. So let me tell you how to read this graph and then we're going to go from that point. So here's a copy of the graph. All I just did is a screenshot, blew it up, put it in my printer and voila, bada boom, bada bing. So each one of the blocks represents a stitch within this idea. So if you count the number of blocks, so you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. I could actually just start writing on my pattern here that that was 14 blocks. So it helps you to be able to make notes on your pattern. So I got 14 here and then you can count. Now the nice thing about this is that the stripes when the designer did it are all 16. I actually already went in advance. So technically there should be 16 of these whites. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. Am I right? Am I right? I didn't know that actually. <laughs> I actually counted way up here just to make sure because they all look the same to me. So therefore this would have to be 16 on this side to stay balanced and then it ends with 14. So you'll notice that there's different colors being used on here and I want to talk about bobbins because you're going to need different bobbins in order to work because you're not just uh, fastening off every time you finish a color. You're going to keep it onto your project and then you're going to use it as you continually move up the rows. So what bobbins are is your yarn. So for example you have a gray here, you have a white, you have a gold and then you have a white. So this white here and this white are not the same yarn ball. They're different because they're in a different position. So as you crochet along you're going to have a gray and then you're going to drop the gray. You're not going to fasten off and leave it and then you're going to start white. And then once the white's done you're going to drop it and then you're going to do gold 
and then drop it. And then you'll have your white here on the other side. So you have two different whites as you see. Now when you come back with, you'll have white again, you drop it. The gold that you did drop, you're gonna pick back up and start again with the gold and then as soon as you get here. So you're gonna notice that you're gonna need different colors of yarn to be available to you that you'll always constantly pick up and, and drop off. The question is, is how many bobbins do you really truly need in order to make, in order to have these? Now for myself, I have extra yarn because you know I'm a yarnaholic so I might ha actually have two balls of white here so I don't have to roll up a mini ball in order to do a small section like that. So that's completely up to you on how you wanna do it. But let's, let's take a closer look at the bobbins and see what we're gonna need. So as you begin, what's gonna happen is that you need a gray, white, gold, and white. Okay, so then you need four bobbins. So you have one here, one, one, and one. But look what happens on row number two. When you move this up, you're gonna need a white, gold, gray, darker gray, white, and then gray. So that means that you have six bobbins. So when you keep moving them up like this, you can determine how many bobbins that you're gonna need to have to use at one time. So you have a white, gold, gray, dark gray, white, and gray. So when you get start getting rid of colors, like for example, you'll see that the white is eventually gonna finish just like this. So at this particular point here in the pattern, you'll see that you'll only need a gold, gray, dark gray, and white as you, if you just follow across. It's only when you start getting at the bottoms of the chevrons is that you start adding more colors. So you have gold and then gray, white, gold, dark gray, and white. So that means that when I'm looking at this, I'm only ever gonna need six bobbins to use at any one time, and it's kind of a neat idea. So let's uh, begin to look at this pattern from a perspective of doing the chaining, and I'm gonna show you how to change the colors, because once you start this, it's not a lot of counting, because the fact is, is that right down the center is a difference of one color versus another, which makes it really quite easy to follow. And if you're using large yarn balls, like I'm going to, it just, it just becomes very easy to be able to manipulate the bobbins as well. So let's uh, go back to the pattern. You can either count the number of boxes here or you can cheat by going back to the pattern. It tells you how many to start with your chain and the starting chain is all one color. So you don't need to start a chain because it's virtually impossible to start a chain with all these different colors at the same time. So the first one is gonna be your just one color that we're gonna use across and then the first line going up we're gonna go across. And then we'll, I'll teach you how to read the patterns as well. So let's uh, go through a little bit of pattern reading too. So the designer says to start here. So what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna start at this point and read the number of boxes. So there's 14 boxes, 16, 16, and 14. So I'm gonna start off and go in this direction here. Okay, so I'm working my way across. When I get this, what I'm gonna do is use a highlighter, which I forgot upstairs. So I'm gonna highlight the, all the first boxes done. So I'm gonna just take my highlighter and just go across. And then on line number two, I'm gonna go in the other direction and read it. So as I turn the project around, I read the chart from this point of view and keep going this way. Okay, that was for row number two. Then once I get that done, I highlight it again and then I start on the next row going in the other direction. So you're going to snake up back and forth in order to follow this and just rely on the number of counts. The wonderful thing about this is that all of the different stripes are the same size. They're all 16 boxes whenever they're in the totals when you have it going like this. Here there obviously will be different until it gets to about here and then it will be 16 again. So it's a really kind of an easy pattern to be able to follow and uh, I don't think you'll have much trouble with this at all. So let's actually now start to do our chain and let's uh, begin. So as stated, I need to carry one pound yarn ball and just use the colors that you would like to do. You don't have to use what's in the pattern if you don't like those colors and if you wanna make it more personal, it's up to you. That's just a suggestion. So carrying one pound, I'm gonna put it onto the size H, five millimeter crochet hook today. It says to chain 61. Now you'll, you'll notice that there's only 60 boxes on there, not 61. That's because when we start, it's gonna go uh, single crochet second chain from the hook. So therefore it will not, um, that, that 60, that one, like six, uh, 60 plus one, that one will not even exist. So let's uh, just chain 61, so one, two, three, four, five, and six go all the way to 61 for me. So my chaining of 61 is done and I'm using the same color that is the gray when it says start here. So we're gonna continue this color only just for uh, 14, bo uh, 14 boxes or 14 stitches in order to make it work. So second chain from the hook, it says to um, uh, single crochet in that one plus the next 13 in the instructions, but there's only a total of 14 altogether. So that's the same thing. So this is one, two, and three, 
and I'm gonna show you how to change color. This is four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Now this is the fourteenth one. So this is the fourteenth one and I cannot finish using the same yarn. I have to finish the using the next yarn I'm about to start. So the next box that we're about to do or the next stitch is gonna be the new color. So before you can do that, see this strand here? You need to move it forward and out of your way. It needs to come forward. You can't leave it sitting in behind. And what you need to do is take the new color. So I'm just gonna use more of a beige and you're gonna take the new color and put that onto your hook and finish that fourteenth one off. And therefore that new color is then ready for you then for the next section. So the new color is white in the diagram but I'm just gonna make it beige. And so for the next sixteen it's gonna be this color. So let's count those out. So one and two, three, four, five, this is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. But sixteen I cannot finish. If I finish sixteen it will not work out. So this, this is the sixteenth one. Move this strand now in front, okay? And you're gonna grab another strand and this now changes to gold. I'm just gonna use blue just as a representation. And I'm gonna put a loop here. There is no ties or anything and I'm gonna put that on and pull that through to finish that. So for the next sixteen then is going to be the gold. In this case I'm just gonna leave it as blue and the next sixteen are gonna be this color. So I got one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, is ten, eleven, this is twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. This is sixteen. I do not wanna finish the sixteenth one. Again move this yarn in front and get another yarn ready. Okay so these will be like your bobbins. So grabbing another one here I want to start with this color and finish that stitch. So for the final there should only be fourteen stitches left and so for the final then I will just finish this off. So continuing along again make sure these yarns are in front that you drop off because you'll need those accessing when you come back across. So this is one and there should be a total of fourteen. So this is two, three, four, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, this is ten, it's eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So let's uh, recap what we have here. So this is the fourteenth and let's recap exactly what we're looking at at this moment. So right now here's a zoomed out view and I just finished right here. So we have our colors here that we see. We have our center line and we just did everything. All the yarn that we dropped that's leading to the yarn ball should be in the front side coming out of the project. If it's coming out of the back side you're gonna have to frog and redo it. Okay so it has to be on the front. So let's turn our work and do the next row up. Okay so let's just turn our work. Do so gently. You don't wanna twist all your bobbins all up and we're going to begin starting on the other side. But let's go back to our chart and just quickly review. 
So coming back to our chart here we're now on line number two. So I will take a highlighter and I'll highlight that I've done number one and this time do you see how there's one box left? So now there's only 13. So you can write the number 13 if you really wanted to to help you. There's still only 16 of this color and look there's a new color coming into play right in the middle here. There's uh, one each so I'm gonna have to add more yarn there and then the white here there's gonna be uh, 16 again and look there's gonna be one less gray so that'll be 13 over here on this side. So this time what I need to do is that I need to use all the bobbins that I have currently and I'll have to add two more right to make up for the chevron that seems to be appearing to coming down. So let's begin. So we're gonna use the same color to go back in the other direction but we had 14 last time. This time it's only gonna be 13. So coming into the first one. So let's count those out. So one and I'll get quicker for you two and just keeping these strands out of the way. This is three four, five, six, seven, eight, this is nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and thirteen. So this is thirteen. You cannot finish thirteen remember. What we said, if you finish the final one then therefore the next one's not gonna be ready. So what you have to do, shift the yarn forward Okay, so it's now in the front here and now you're gonna grab the new back one over here but watch what happens here. You wanna use that strand to follow through. Now the problem with this is that if you do it right now, do you see how that you got this strand that's gonna pop over on the angle right here? Well you wanna bury that in on your next one. So when you go into the next stitch right for 16, you're gonna go into the gray here that you see but you're also going to go underneath that, that blue one there to bury it so to, it drags it over and you're gonna use that so that it does a nice even line on the back. So you just gotta watch that. So that was one of 16. So let's continue. So you got two and three, four, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So you cannot finish the 16th. So you gotta move it forward again out of the way and you're gonna grab a new piece of yarn. So I'm just gonna grab a gray. Loop it around because we only have this only appear once. So you're gonna loop it around it and finish it like that. Okay. So the next one will be this new gray that you have. So just put in the new gray. So just going in pulling it through but you can't finish that because you have to drop it already. It's only one stitch and then you're gonna grab another piece of yarn and that piece of yarn then is going to be um, your next piece that you're going to use. So let me just uh, trim this off. Okay so I got this color here and I'm gonna loop it around and finish that stitch just like there and then use that just only for one stitch. So that's right in the center. So make sure you keep your strands in check and under control at all times. So you're gonna use that new color and remember you can't finish it because you're only doing one stitch. Move it forward out of the way and now you're just gonna grab this color that you were working with and now finish that. So it just gets really tedious right in the very beginning but if you're managing your strings you can handle it. So the next 16 are this color. So one and two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it's ten, eleven, and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and look 16 goes into this new section over here and watch what you have to do. See this straggler that's holding down and behind? You have to trap that into position so that it travels up in the right section. So just up and remember we have slower tutorials available on how to do graph GAN work if you need it. So that's the final one. You can't finish it there. This one has to come in front and the new one has to come up and being ready for you right there. So the, the remainder there's only 13 should be this color. So one, two, 
three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So you got the right stitch counts there. So now when you stretch everything back out all the strands that you changed with should be on the front side again and so they'll, they'll be ready for you when you turn it around. So let's turn around our work again doing so gently so you don't uh, uh, tangle all your strands. So moving up on row number three you'll notice that the starting now only has 12. You'll, you're noticing it's starting to come up on an angle like it's supposed to. So this time there's only gonna be 12. So we could chain up one and one single crochet in the next 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so now you got your twelve. Drop it, pull it forward, grab your new one that you had that you're changing it over to, finish it, and remember that's dragging over. Do you see that? So when you go into this one that's starting come up um, onto that stitch and that one right underneath and then finish it. So there's 16. So 1 and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So I can't finish this one. I have to move it forward because that's 16. I'm ready for the new color here that I have and I'm gonna use that new color to finish it, that stitch. And again that one comes up on an angle. Do you see how that comes up? So when I go into the next one I just wanna go in. Okay, so I'm going into the stitch plus underneath that one that's coming over, finish it. And this one only has two this time so going in, pulling it through and then coming forward, switch to the next one, finish it. Okay, the next two are this color so going in, okay, that one I can finish and the next one I cannot finish all the way. I move it forward and then I bring up the next yarn that we have which is this teal blue. Okay and then go for another 16. So do you see it's all about the yarn manipulation of keeping everything in count. This pattern really is really no big deal to be honest with you. It's just a matter of keeping your counts. The counts are really easy. It's not like there's any kind of weird shapes going on inside this particular project and I think that you'll enjoy it just uh, for that matter. So I should be counting to 16 but I'm not. I'm now aware of the pattern. So I know that the this particular one here is that it's leaning back into an angle and because of that I'm just gonna go one extra because that's what it shows in the pattern. So you can get kind of used to what's going on in this. Okay, so I'm gonna go into this color here and then I'm just going to come through and let it fall in front and grab the next color to finish. Okay, and so then this is the remaining then on this side. So there should only be 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So now when I'm done this all the strands that I dropped should now be in the front of the project just like I had before. You see them all here. Isn't that great? So therefore I know that everything is on track and everything is ready for me. And this is how you do this particular pattern. You can kind of start to see now that starting the chevrons are kind of moving out just like this as it shows in the pattern and uh, this is really not a hard pattern in order to work out. So it's actually a really neat idea and I hope that, that you enjoy this. Uh, remember that we do have uh, more intensive our, uh, video tutorials on doing graph can work and uh, those are we have a whole series on that if you wish to learn that even further. But this is the Bold Angles Pillow another free pattern by Yarnspirations.com. Please enjoy and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.